Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Kat. I'm a wife, a homeschool mom, and an avid reader. With it being 2024, uh, I thought I would go over some of the books that I really enjoyed during 2023. I kind of broke this down by month, um, along with like my first read, my last read, um, and my favorite um, Year of Sanderson secret novel. So, jumping right in, the first book, let me grab it. My first book that I read was The Guide by Peter Heller. This was a book that I was introduced to via What Should I Read Next? Um, Anne Bogle talked a lot of, about this one and its prequel, um, The River. The River came out first, um, and I haven't read that one, but later he came back and wrote, um, the guide in 20 what year was that in 2021 so post um covid and the kind of fun thing about this one is that while this world takes place post pandemic you still get um trickles of the pandemic in it. Like he has um, a mask in his back pocket, um, even though they don't require anything special for um, their guests. This one was um, a very interesting one. There is a mystery in it. Um, and there's a little bit of a uh, kind of uh, property line dispute going on in this one. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I, I just had a really good time reading this one in 2023. It's very plot driven or at least I felt so things just keep happening um and our character is trying to figure out why he has to watch um where he's at so carefully throughout um when he's guiding people um on these amazing um river waters to take them fly fishing but i had a great time with it and it was definitely a fun way to kick off my 2024 or i'm sorry my 2023 reading during the year well the guide was my first read of 24 um i'm sorry of 2023 it was not my favorite read of January. That one goes to um, Margaret Robert Rogerson's Vesper Teen. Um, in this one, the world building is just amazing. Um, I had read Sorcery of Thorns, also by Margaret Rogerson, and had an amazing time with it. And so when I found out that she was writing another book, I um, went ahead and kind of bought the book without even knowing what this book was because I enjoyed uh, Margaret Rogerson's writing so much in Sorcery of Thorns. All of her books have, or the two books I've read of hers so far, have these magical worlds and. Uh, just so while the world is magical, it's also kind of very similar to ours. Um, 
as far as certain things work. And so, but there is that magical element in it. Um, this one in that cover is just gorgeous. I love the foiling on it along with the art. It just really made this one pop. In this one, we are following Artesmia, Artisma, uh, who's training to be a gray sister, um, which is a nun who cleanses bodies of the deceased so that their souls can pass on. Otherwise, they rise as spirits with ravenous hunger for the living. So this one had those kind of magical elements of um, almost like zombies. Um, that's probably too literal of a term. Or I guess ghosts would be the better term than zombies. But a lot of fun in this one. And in January, I did really good on rating my books. and. This one got five stars um, and just, oh, I, there are some books that I wish I could reread again for the first time and Vespertine was definitely one of those. And this might become a series uh, eventually, but um Right now, as far as I know, it's the only one out, but if she continues in this world, those will definitely be automatic buys for me. The other book that I gave five stars to in January almost was a no-brainer for me um, because of the author and everything that went into it. But this one definitely was my favorite of the four. Um, and that's Emerald, uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This was the first of the four secret novels. Um, I've only read three of the four so far. Um, but this one was by far my favorite between the three. All three that I have read have gotten high ratings from me. And I have enjoyed the world. But with Tress, I really enjoyed seeing Hoyd as a main character. Even though Tress is like the primary main character in this book. Because that's who we're following. Hoyd plays a really big part. And I just had so much fun learning more about... Or seeing more of him on the page. Um, we don't really learn a whole lot more about him due to um, events that are kind of explained in the book. And I don't want to give away if you haven't read other Cosmere books. Um, but I had so much fun with this. The um, world building in this one included the sea was not made of water. It was made of these, um, like, balls that if they got wet, they would then turn into trees, for the, at least for the Emerald Sea. And it was just really neat to see how Sanderson played with what we expect to be common knowledge um, in our world. And so, Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This was um, another five star that I read for January, but was my favorite from the year of Sanderson that I've read so far. Moving forward into February, the book that I picked um, was Naomi Novik's Spinning Silver. This one is a. Rumpelstiltskin retelling, um, but a little bit different. Um, in this one, we have our main character. She's not been treated well by her father and has figured out a way to spin gold, um, or spin silver. Um, and just 
a lot of fun with this one. One thing that I kind of noticed, um, and you're going to hear this a whole lot throughout, is that a lot of the stories that I really was drawn back to um, when I looked through what I had read for 2023 is world building. I have just so many of the books that I read, especially anything that is fantasy, the world building is really what made it stand out to me. Um, the authors have just done amazing. Uh, one of the little blurbs on the back um, talks about that it's um, got the vastness of Tolkien, and I can totally see that. This world had humans, and it had fairy folk, and, you know, um, those fey creatures. It was just so much fun to read this and kind of get some of these lesser known uh or not lesser known but to get a fairy tale that is so well known and spinning it in a way that gives us almost an entirely different book in march one of my favorite reads was actually a young or it was a middle grade novel this one again had great world building and also was a retelling. Um, that is one thing that also was a common, at least for the first half of my year, a common um, thread that I saw between Tress with the um, Princess Bride um, retelling and Spinning Silver with the Rumpelstiltskin, then East. Um, which, um, was a east of the moon, west of the, east of the sun, west of the moon retelling. Um, this one was, um, by Edith Patu, um, east of the west, no, that's not. It is a, sorry, I'm trying to get the retelling. Um, yeah, East of the Sun, West of the Moon is the um, fairy tale retelling that it is. Um, and in a lot of the world, the book is just called East. Here in the U.S., it's called North Child. Um, and that kind of comes out as you're reading the book on why those differences um, were important. Um, and so this is, in this tale, we have a young girl is kidnapped by a polar bear and um, kind of has to figure out life with this polar bear. Um, there are some Beauty and the Beast kind of vibes, um, but I think that's more the original tale has those same vibes, um, but had a lot of fun with it. And I do, I totally understood why so many, um, other booktubers have really enjoyed this book. Um, I could not put it down while I was reading it. The world building is great. There is that fairy tale retelling, like I said, and just very well written as well. I loved every moment with that one. In April, my favorite book that I read was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. In this one, we have um, Victor and Eli, who were best friends and have a falling out during um, their college um, years 
and you kind of get this dual timeline or these flashbacks throughout it of now and then you go back to when they were friends and it comes together just building this story that is very rich um and uh very very intriguing um as we're learning about these characters it, this book does take place more in a world like ours but also has the superhero elements in it and we get um kind of an inside look on what these two characters victor and eli how they feel about superpowers and the choices that they made leading them to where they're at today um and kind of how they feel different about just life in general i had a lot of fun with this i did read both vicious and vengeful during 2023 had a great time with both um and but vengeful kind of got beat out uh for some other books throughout the year um as i was reading the book that i picked in may which actually may was my best reading month of 2023 um, I read not only the most number of books, but also the most number of pages. Um, I read 17 books during the month. I didn't write my pages down, um, but I think it was like 1,700 pages. Um, so great reading month for me. And I think between the readathons, I did during May and it being our first month out of school really helped. But the book I picked for May is A Touch of Darkness um, by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the what the cover looked like. Um, that cover just really was pretty. It um, pulled me in when my sister recommended this one to me. But this is a Persephone and Hades retelling. And so when she recommended it to me originally, I held off on reading it because I had just read um, Katie Roberts. Um, Hades and Persephone retelling. So I didn't want to jump right into Touch of Darkness. But I have really enjoyed um, St. Clair's Hades and Persephone retelling because it continues through the whole series just being Hades and Persephone unlike Katie Roberts which focuses on each book focuses on different um god pairings um throughout in this one we have our main character she lives a normal life and Hades lives in the underworld but she ends up getting introduced to him um and he takes her um to the underworld and she, throughout the series she's just learning more and more about Hades who he is kind of why he is the way he is um a lot of fun to kind of get that uh taking a bad guy and kind of seeing both sides of it um and getting to know who he is making him a little more of a gray character than um many of us um are used to again world building amazing um this one was a fantasy romance and that was one thing that i kind of noticed as i went through the year 
that more and more of those fantasy romances were creeping in. Um, and I was really enjoying them. So, um, a lot of fun for Touch of Darkness in May for me. In June, the book that I really enjoyed was The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. In this one, we kind of have a dystopian, we have a dystopian world. Um, and the, it's, if it were written after 2020, I would have said that this was kind of the author's imagining of what would have happened had COVID shut us down the way, um, had shut us down fully, um, and we didn't have a return to kind of normal. This one was actually written in 2000, or published in 2019, so pre-pandemic, but still the author uses a virus to um, create this dystopian world, and this is a Little Red Riding Hood retelling um, in this dystopian world, but the big bad wolf was not quite who I expected it to be, um, or how I expected it to be. Um, and Little Red Riding Hood um, was definitely a lot more um, dangerous than she was portrayed in the original telling of this fairy tale. Um, in this retelling, she definitely knows how to stand up for herself, and it just gives a great um, story. Again, that magical, or not, that, that world building that we see in this dystopian world was just amazing. So in July, my reading took a slightly different turn. I kind of didn't read as much fantasy um, during the high point of the summer. Instead, I read a lot of thriller. And the one that I picked for July was The Other Wife by Claire McGowan. In this one, um, we have a woman moves into this kind of secluded neighborhood and she is spends a lot of her time kind of on her own as her husband travels for work and she is um, pregnant so not working and she becomes friends with the neighbor Susie or I'm sorry Susie is the main character um Nora is the neighbor. Um, Susie and Nora kind of become friends. They're on this secluded neighborhood road. They're kind of all each other have as far as um, company in this isolated um, space without having to go off into town or whatever. Um, so they kind of build the relationship, but we also have a third woman named Elle, and she's dealing with some different things. This whole story just really um, twisted, you know, kind of the, twisted the reader's um, thoughts throughout, or at least twisted my th um, thoughts as I was reading it. And you're constantly kind of guessing what's going on again or at least i was um a lot of fun really enjoyed it um and definitely um am interested in what else um this author uh what claire mcgowan has written um other than this because i kind of want to check out her um other works and see if I enjoy it as much as I did the other one. 
in August, yes, in August, um, for the, um, Magical Readathon, one of the books that I had picked that was outside my normal kind of reading was Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Um, this one is by Tasha Gassi, Gass, Gazu, sorry, Tasha Gazu, uh, Kawuguchi, yeah, I'm butchering his name, I am so sorry. Um, in this one, we kind of have this, it's our world, but a very special cafe that once a day, um, a guest can um, take this specific seat in the cafe and get served tea and they can go back in time um, and have a conversation um, or meet with people who have been there before. Uh, this story just really played with our world and how things work. And I had such a great time. I could see myself wanting something like that um, if anything ever happened um, to one of my family members of wanting to have that one more conversation with them. Um, the only caveat to this is once the, um, coffee gets cold, they, um, the, the magic is over. Um, it was a lot of fun to read and just really pulled on my heartstrings throughout the whole thing. In September, um, I was really enjoying getting into books um, with those autumn feels. And one of the ones I read was actually a horror fiction, um, and it's called Seed by Anaya Alborn. Um, in this one, we have this um, man who just life is very hard for him. Um, it starts out, he and his family are driving down the road, um, and they get into a car accident, and he swears that he sees something out there, um, and then they, as things go on, you're just kind of left wondering, um, what's going on. So our main character, Jack Winter, fled his rural roots in Georgia, vowing never to look back. Years later, the new life he has built is threatened by a sinister presence that looms dead ahead. Um, that's kind of the blurb from Google um, Books that doesn't really give too much away, but it was what I, when I looked at it, that's the part that I read and just... I was sucked into wanting to read this. Um, this one I did get on recommendation from my younger sister. And it just really rocked my socks off. Um, I had so much fun with this world that was created based off of our world. It's our world, but then other elements are coming in. Um, a lot of fun, kind of trippy as I was reading it. Um, and I definitely could see the horror elements in this. I don't think I, I don't think I had problems with it. Um, as far as nightmares or anything, but I do remember that I didn't really want to read it after dark. Um, so a lot of um things going on in that one uh, a lot of intrigue in it that i enjoyed in october i read a lot of 
thriller, a lot, and even more horror. Um, one of the ones I read was Darcy Coates' The Haunting of Ashburn, Ashburn House. Sorry for the camera moving. The cat is pushing on the tripod. Um, with the, the Haunting of Ashburn House, we have our main character. She is left this property, um, the Ashburn House and has no choice but moving there due to events in her life um and when she moves in she starts noticing these scratchings on the wall um and just different things in this it was kind of a creepy read um darcy coates does amazing with writing these Things that are, are adding a layer to our world that just increases the goosebump factor. Um, I had a lot of um, kind of intrigue as I was going into this book. And as I read it, it kept me engaged throughout the entire book. For my November pick, I did do The Lions of Fifth Avenue. This is the only um, historical fiction book that I picked um, during the year. Not that I didn't read historical fiction, but this one by far blew me away. Um, we have dual timelines. It's taking place first in 1913 with the superintendent's wife um the superintendent of the library on fifth avenue um and his wife and trying to deal with uh things disappearing from the library and then we also have her granddaughter oh sorry we have um the granddaughter of this family who in 1993 80 years later is working also at this same library when things again start disappearing a lot of history in this and a lot of kind of other things sprinkled in you do have Kind of seeing how women were starting to come out from the shadows of their husbands and learning to be their own independent person. Um, with this one, I just really enjoyed those dual timelines along with the historical aspects throughout it. That's Lions of Fifth Avenue by Fiona Davis. And then last, but definitely not least, was my December pick. Um, most of December, I did read Christmas romance or Christmas contemporary books. But the one book that just really blew me away <sighs> sorry, was the sequel um to house of salt and sorrows which is house of roots and ruin by aaron a craig in this one we are following verity um who she and her sisters have dealt with tragedy um and the world around them believes that a curse has been put on them because so much tragedy has just happened around them um, and Verity decides to leave, um, leave her family house and go off on an adventure of her own because she feels that her oldest sister is stifling her. And as she's having these adventures, she finds out that she has, um, a special talent that she didn't realize that she had 
uh, until she goes to leave her um, her family home. This one I enjoyed a lot more than House of Salt and Sorrows. Um, while both books are good, I do feel that this sequel really stands um, above Salt and Sorrows. But uh, Magical World, um, a lot of different aspects in it. Um, this one is more thriller than its first book, which was more of a horror. And one last thing that I want to share before I um, let you go from watching my video is my genre blanket. I have finished it um, and added a border to it. I went with an olive. Ooh. I went with an olive green partially because it was um, a skein that I knew I had enough of the color to do the border. Um, and partly because it just kind of stood out against the other colors, even the forest green and the sage green. So here we go. So we're starting off. We have all of So down here, this would be um, January, and I know that just by how much contemporary was in it, versus the um, beginning of the year when I was reading oh, a lot of fantasy um, things. One thing I did notice when I was looking at my story graph um information at the end of the year was that my reading started out during the year not only was it dark in colors but it was also very dark it was darker in themes than at the beginning of the year and you kind of as i looked at the graph i started the year off very dark and then by the the end of the year it slowly um faded into more contemporary reads um but a lot of fun and a lot of great reads for 2023 if you are um curious about any specific book that i read i do recommend that you look through my past videos to get more of a synopsis, uh, my TBRs along with my wrap ups and my vlogs will have more details on those books. But that's all I have for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this and kind of, I hope that some of the books that I talked about kind of gave you an idea if these books would be for you or not, it was a lot of fun to kind of see how my favorite books um, shaped what, or how they portrayed my reading tastes throughout 2023. But I will see you guys next time. Bye.